There's the beautiful Z fender after being blocked out, build primered, and, and ready for my sealing coat of epoxy primer. So obviously you're going to need epoxy primer. This is the white stuff that I'm getting using for my other project. Again, I'm using a, a medium red color. So I figured the white base would, would allow it to pop. You need the activator. And then this here is urethane reducer. And what that is, is that's obviously the reducer that I'm going to use to cut the epoxy. Now if you look on the bottom here, you'll see some speeds, fast, medium, slow, and very slow. And that affects the chemical makeup of the reducer. Obviously, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know any of that stuff. General idea being you want to go as slow as you can based on the conditions that you're painting in. Now, I'm in a climate control garage here. It's about 75 degrees right now. I can get away with that medium on the urethane reducer probably through the base coat. I am going to use it for my epoxy. However, I am going to reach out to Southern Polyurethanes and see if they would recommend, even though I've got a temperature control in here, to go slow or even very slow. The, uh, the hotter the temperature in the booth or the environment that you're painting in, the slower of a reducer you would want to get. I don't have to mix up too much, obviously, because I don't have a very large panel to do it all. So I'm going to use just a regular old mixing cup here, a little small guy, this guy that I mixed my build primer in. Now, how do you get the 25% reduced? Well, essentially what I'm going to do is fill it up and make as little as I can and then look at the ounces and then take 25% of however many ounces I have in the cup, multiply that, and then add that amount of urethane reducer. I'm not going to try to, you know, make a big, a big mathematical deal out of it. Got all my pieces parts here. Now, I have not opened this can at all yet, so I did shake it up by hand a little bit but there's still, I expect, quite a bit of solids to be collected here at the bottom. So much like I did with the build primer, not quite as bad with the epoxy primer, but like with the build primer, we're gonna mix it up really well with a paint stick. Just doing it um, on a shaker, if you have a shaker or, or something is not, not adequate. So you wanna get in there with the paint stick and mix stuff around. All right, so I found my one-to-one -one scale on the cup. Since I'm mixing up so little paint, I got these little medicine cups just like you get if you get children's Tylenol or something like that. Uh, and I'm just going to dip it out of a can instead of pouring it out. It tends to uh, not make as much of a mess that way. We got that. Now it's time for the uh, activator. And all I do is just kind of uh, turn it over on itself just to give it a quick little shake. There's no, uh, you don't really need to worry about this stuff too much. So we're going to go again, go one to one. So now I'm going to go to the one line. All right, so that was quick and easy. Now this is way too much paint for, for what I need to do here, but that's okay. So now I'll go and look at the ounces, and I am at just about two ounces, just shy of two ounces. 20% of two ounces is 0.4 ounces. There's not really a way to figure out 0.4 ounces on here, so I've got my scale. All right, I'm gonna use that little medicine cup again. One trick that uh, somebody pointed out to me, I don't remember who it was, if you pour the can with the spout at the top, if you can see the spout for the can, there it is. Spout for the cans at the top, you don't get as much gurgling. All right, so zero scale out here, and we'll pour for 0.4 ounces. All right, so that's about 0.4, and I wasted some reducer here. Right, that's all nice and mixed. It's still epoxy primer, so you still wait 30 minute induction time. In my last video, I mentioned that you can spray the reduced epoxy and then wait a couple hours and then put your base coat on. So this is Southern Polyurethane's tech manual. And at the end of this tech manual, they give you, give you procedures for the perfect paint job. And one of those, and they take you all the way from bare metal all the way through spraying the clear coat. So what this tells you is that you let the epoxy sit for 30 minutes like I am right now, indu inducing it, stir it, and spray it over, uh, over the entire car. And then it should sit for six hours before spraying base coat or the other options to let it sit overnight in wet sand with epoxy or wet sand the epoxy 
400 to 800 grit and then spray your base. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna spray this full wet coat, let it sit overnight. So the SPI tech manual calls for using a 1.3 millimeter spray tip as opposed to a 1.5 millimeter spray tip that you use when you are shooting full strength epoxy. This orange thing down here is an inline desiccant filter. This particular one is made by Motor Guard. I got another one here that I picked up at Harbor Freight. And unfortunately, this is a little bit more stout of a construction. It's metal, the metal at the top and the bottom there. But the problem that I had was that it wasn't passing any airflow. So when I tested it yesterday, and thankfully I, I tested it with just lacquer thinner, I had to put the, uh, the regular at about 60 pounds to get any good fan out of this. So I'll, these are a, a better or a superior build quality, which frankly is a little surprising coming from Harbor Freight, that didn't, uh, in the end it didn't do the work. So I don't know, maybe I just got a bad one. But for now, I can't really recommend the, the Harbor Freight ones. They are a dollar, about a dollar cheaper, two dollars cheaper. But obviously, if they uh, don't work, they're not worth it. All right, ready to go here. Give it one final stir. Strain it. Noticeably thinner than the uh, unreduced stuff, that's for sure. All right, I'll go get, the, uh, get in the booth, get the gun set up, and get a coat on it. Only one coat. I only have the paint dial for the fluid. Down, only open one turn. I usually start with one and a quarter for a regular build epoxy, but I was getting a run when I did that on my little test panel. It'll be nice to see how easy it is to check overlap and everything too, since I'm really doing an offset color here. I'm having problems with getting my overlap correct. I'm sure you cringed as much as I did when I saw that. That's what you call massive cratering. So the SPI epoxy is, I wouldn't say notorious or known for, but will tend to crater, especially on its first coat. And that's indicative of me putting it on too heavy. So if you noticed, kind of hard to probably see a little bit, but even though I cut my fluid delivery down a little bit, I also slowed down right on that, that top edge. So when I came into with it on the second coat and got the overlap, that's what caused the cratering. So it's not an adhesion thing, it's just kind of how that, I don't know if it's too much solvent and the solvent kind of separates or what, uh, I'm not quite sure what actually causes that. But you can see that the rest of the panel is actually not too bad. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to block that out and I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure that I'm really going to care. Um, but this is why I'm doing this to get a feel for how this stuff is going to go down now, vice having to do it when I get to that point on my actual project. I Hopefully uh, it'll block out a little bit of the ways and then I'm just going to carry on with it and not uh, not worry. I'll, I'll uh, might be good experimentation to see what the base coat would look like with that stuff underneath of it anyway and see how much it really messes it up to give me some uh, sensitivity to that. But tomorrow I'll come in and hit it with uh, between 400 and 800 grit wet. I'll see what I got for the sanding block and then I'll lay down some base coat. Next step for the Z fender here is to block it out. I'm going to use 600 grit wet bucket soft block and uh, 600 grit sandpaper on that letting that soak for a little bit and then you can see hopefully pretty well that uh, the huge cratering and everything that I had there. This mark right there is the difference between where I went to bare metal and some filler and all those cracks so that's not really in the area where I'm going to be painting I'm more concerned with this in here happy with the way that came out it's nice and smooth there's uh, I can feel some some grit on it but nothing that the uh, blocking won't take out I want to try to be really careful right in here because of that seam there I don't want to go through the bare metal there though like I said I am only going to use 600 grit Blocked out with 600 grit. I got a gray scuff pad now. I can't remember what the equivalent grit is for the gray scuff pad, but I'll put it down here. 
I'm going to uh, just wipe it down in here. I didn't really get in here too hard with the block all on the uh, fender flare. I also left a lot of the texturing from the cratering that's down here. I sanded some of it out. I could have gotten it all out. If this was a, you know, a real panel, I would have blocked that until it was smooth and probably done another round of epoxy primer as a sealant because I would have probably gone right through that. But anyway, I'm going to take care of this gray pad real quick and then move on to mix it up some paint. Three parts that are going to go with paint in your base coat. First, you've got the base coat itself. Urethane reducer mixes one to one. I did get an answer from one gentleman on Southern Polyurethane's form. He said, based on my conditions in here, which are about 72, 73 degrees or so, that he thinks the medium urethane reducer will be fine. And I recognize the guy's name as, as putting out the good information often. The other thing that it calls for, optional, but I don't think I found anybody that doesn't do it, is they use the activator from the clear coat to activate the base. But because I'm going to be mixing up so little paint, I'm not going to use the activator when I go to paint my uh, main project for real and I'm laying down, you know, more than a couple ounces of paint like I will tonight, I am going to do that and add that stuff in. So for tonight, it's just going to be the urethane reducer and the base coat that gets mixed one to one. Three coats is my plan. I'll see what kind of coverage I get out of three coats. That's again part of the process here. Doesn't really speak to pot life at all. Without the activator, however, I don't have to worry about it kicking. And I could probably leave this stuff in the, uh, in the cup for, for quite a while without the activator. But again, it doesn't really say I don't in intend to mix a whole bunch up and not use it. But I'll mix up enough and I shouldn't have to worry about pot life at all. Fender's sitting here. I'm going to use a tack cloth just to get some of the dust off of here. You don't want to press down on this. It's not... Uh, you don't want to, the tack cloth is obviously sticky. You don't want the stuff that picks up the dust and the dirt to get spread onto the panel. So you don't want to press really hard because then you'll impart it into the metal and onto your surface and that's not good. So that's about uh, how much that picked up just from sitting there. Right before I get ready to spray, I'll go ahead and hit it one more time. So again, this stuff mixes up one to one between the base coat and the reducer. Give it a nice stir. All right, now again, at this point, I would add the activator, the clear coat activator, but I'm not going to do that. First time ever spraying base coat. So I'm going to head and get the paint gun set up here, get in the booth, and get the spraying. All right, a couple things that I failed to mention. 1.3 millimeter tip. I got the fluid open about one and three quarters turns. Two look just a little bit too heavy for me. I got my air pressure set on 26. And I also remember to strain the paint before putting it into the, into the cup here. So I'm going to use the compressed air from the gun to spray down the panel with air and use the, the tack cloth to get that last little bit of dust off and then go with coat number one. 30 minutes between coats. Coat number one. First coat of red has been applied, and there's uh, there's all sorts of wild stuff going on in there. So I got, yeah, I don't. Uh, it's really smooth. Missed a spot right there, kinda. You can see an extra white, but it dried really smooth. I can. It totally looks totally different than than the uh, epoxy does, and definitely than the build primer does. You look up here. You can also see that I missed. That top edge there, a couple dark spots. The majority of that was because I don't have a whole lot of clearance between the wood rack and there, and I just didn't want to slam the gun in there and hit stuff. So the top is going to get uh, neglected a bit. But there's uh, it's kind of hard to see, probably with the light not on it directly maybe. You can see some artifacts and stuff going on in there, I think. I can't really see the camera that well. And there's all sorts of, uh, all sorts of stuff going on in here that's not great. But... It's down. That's one coat. Pretty good coverage. Happy with that. The point of the three coats is to get the coverage underneath of it. So 
this uh, as I continue to build mills here I'm sure it'll fill in a little bit more the um, the other thing that I forgot to ask about if you know with the build primer since it's only five minutes in between coats I just kind of spritz it a little bit and, and keep it keep it wet in the nozzle the epoxy primer after when I'm waiting for the 30 minutes I dump it back in the cup this stuff I don't think it's because it's activated I didn't worry about that so I'm probably still going to spritz it here in a couple minutes actually about halfway through my 30 minute wait just to make sure that I've got fluid movement but I don't think I have to worry about dumping the cup in between coats I, I, like I said I wish I had asked that I forgot to ask that question the uh, tech manual is either silent to it or I couldn't find it so hopefully I don't uh, rock up the paint inside the paint gun that'd be really bad but I don't think it's going to, uh, to be too much of a concern. Just a couple minutes prior to the third coat here, it's, uh, coverage is becoming pretty good. I had tried to point these out in here. I don't know if you could see them on the first one, but now they're getting filled in. I don't expect that to be fixed with the third coat. All right, last coat. There's a real subtle line, I don't think you can see it all. Real subtle line right in here in the paint. And I don't know if it's because of just the way that I'm overlapping or something like that. But that'll be interesting to see how that clears out. But, uh, last coat. Alright, third coat is on. I do have a little bit of a dry line I think unfortunately right here right down the center so I'll have to see how that dries up but uh, but that's it for me for tonight so next step will be three coats of universal clear and we'll see how it looks after that